Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. So, we finally come to the end of Operation Red Baron. It actually came to an abrupt end, a little unexpectedly. Um, I'll just do a real quick recap of it, and then I'm going to move on and tell you what's coming next. Uh, I've actually been looking kind of forward to the end of this game, even though I was having fun playing it. Um, I, um, I've been thinking about doing a video series for a long time. I'll tell you about that in a second. Let's get to the quick recap first. Um, I didn't update the, the Russian Civil War. So the Russian Civil War was over. Uh, it, was, it was played yesterday. Um, Bob played um, everybody else and, and Tim played the Soviets as he was throughout the game. And so um, it was really close. Like uh, the only thing that was left to take, he had uh, a Polish territory here. Let's just move these guys out. So he had this Polish territory here. Uh, he had taken over one. Um, and also this was still Ukrainian. Other than that, everything else was Soviet, uh, except for Petrograd and there was a couple places, but they, he didn't need those. Anyway, Ukraine's worth two points. He didn't get the Ukraine. And there was uh, another one where you try to, the only way you're going to get it is uh, through the diplomacy. And so you pick a, a, a country and you just keep rolling for it uh, for all the time that you have. And he had chosen Sweden and he got it to stage three. So one more roll and he would have had that. So that's three points that he left on the table and he lost by two points. The Allies had gotten 16 points and uh, the Soviets had gotten 14 points. So the Soviets actually could have won that game or this game here. And uh, that would have been something because, you know, up until we, we put out version two, there really wasn't much of a chance for the Soviets to win this game, right? We did change some of the rules and we added uh, a way to get the Imperial Russia victory points for them as well. And so that was uh, that that made the difference, and it, it's helped to give the Soviets a chance to win this game. And I think that it's only a matter of time. So um, it, a couple of things happened in this in this game. Uh, the prequel was interesting, and it was nothing like the prequel in Operation Hindenburg. Uh, so the Balkan Wars, the um, the Ottomans had uh, done really well in the Balkan Wars, and they had a ton of stuff left. And so um, they were already, uh, like they were here in Macedonia, uh, they were ready to take out the Serbians. But then uh, the Greece went to the British, right? And um, the British also got the Netherlands and they got Belgium. Like it was just uh, in, really, really improbable that all of those places could have gone so quickly and so early. They're the, the key ones in the game. The minor powers it's just so improbable that they all went that way so quickly um, and and that really sunk the central powers right there because without that they could have taken out serbia a lot easier like they still didn't manage to take everybody out of there you can see there's four um four british still in here and uh, they just uh, like they, they were still working on getting them out and they still hadn't the game was in uh, just finished the spring of 1917 and they still couldn't get them out and, and it's because of all of those minor powers so that put them behind and it made them desperate and so randall who was playing the germans he you know like we were just about out of it the russians were just about in berlin and uh, the enemy was at the gates on the Western Front as well. So we thought, you know what, let's just go for it. And he, he went and he, uh, against all odds, he took Petrograd, <laughs> which collapsed the Soviets, uh, or collapsed the Imperial Russia immediately. Um, well, not immediately, they had a chance to take it back, but they weren't expecting that. So the, the, the only thing they had that could reach there was two armored trains and they had to take out two uh, German infantry and they just came up short. So that collapsed the, the Russians and they became the Soviets and, and the Russian Revolution began. Um, but you see, that was gonna be a problem for the, for the Allies then because that gives the Russians a lot of time uh, to prosecute the, the Civil War. And so that's why the American player, Bob, decided to invoke the uh, peace without victory clause 
uh, when he reached, when he finally reached 37 IPP. I think he got like when he was ro rolling his peacetime income, like at, at 37 IPP, <laughs> that's when you can finally declare war. Or there's three different options. Two of them were to declare war. And one of them was the peace without victory, which he chose. So he was kind of gambling, right? By, by uh, choosing that one. And, and then he rolled it immediately. So I don't know, it was like four or five ones in a row that he rolled on a D6. You know, every turn at the beginning of the turn, he kept rolling a one. So when that happened, that was the end of the game at the end of, the, uh, at the end of that round. And the gamble was that uh, if you shorten the amount of time that the Russians could um, could uh, prosecute the, the civil war, then uh, maybe they don't get their points. And his gamble paid off. Like, the, like I said, they just came up short. And one of the cards they pulled at the end was um, to shorten the Russian civil war by one turn. And all they needed was one more turn to take out the Ukraine and that was two points and then maybe they get that that roll for sweden uh so that would have been three points and that's the victory now that was a gamble i say because um the allies were doing really well and they could have gotten more points like there was just a there were just a couple of spaces short here um they they needed to get uh one dreadnought over to the pacific so uh they had uh, let me see one two three they, they needed two turns because they could have got that dreadnought to the Pacific and they could have got the three dreadnoughts that are up near Britain there, um, down here. And we had a new player. He was, uh, that, this was his first game with us. So he, uh, he, you know, like he, you don't expect the game to end that quickly. Um, and he didn't have his dreadnoughts where he needed to, to collect those points. Um, but like if, if the allies had more time, then they could have gotten more points and they would have put the game out of reach for the Soviets. And so when he invoked that, um, you know, like it was kind of a surprise that it ended like right away as soon as he invoked it, right? And uh, anyway, that's how it ended. So it was an interesting game. We saw things that we never saw before. Um, like I said, it was... Uh, uh, 16 to 14 and the axe or not the axes <laughs> that's the other game uh, the central powers managed to get um seven points out of it so that you know they, they that's that's all right i mean when you're losing the game that's that's not too bad right if they could have gotten that territory back anatolia and bosnia back they tried for both of them on the last turn that they had if they could have gotten them back that's three more points to them and you know that's still not enough to win but um it was not as uh, big a blowout as it would have been if the game would have continued because with the allies making so much more money than the central powers were then the gap was only going to widen as the game went on right anyway so that's uh that's a, a quick recap of operation red baron mostly what i wanted to make this video for is to let you know what's happening next so uh uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Now, I've done videos in the past. Uh, before the game was released, I, I was doing a video series on the playtest map, and that was how to play Global War. And, and really what that was was this is the rule and this is what it means, right? Uh, it was pretty basic stuff. And then when I got the, the real map, then I, I did a game by myself just to show people how the game was played but i purposely didn't take the game to the end and i didn't play like i wasn't playing cutthroat i wasn't trying to win the game for any side i wanted to keep each nation in the game i didn't want to take anybody out uh, and plus i didn't want to show anybody uh, any real strategy i talked about things like here's some options that this guy has you know that this nation here and then the next nation I play, I say, oh, these guys got this kind, these kind of options. And, you know, I talked about those things. But what I really wanted was for players to develop their own strategies, right? I wanted them to, to learn how to play the game, but not how to win the game. I wanted them to figure that out for themselves, right? So this next series, uh, I've been thinking about it for a long time. And I'm, I'm going to be calling it the Global War 1914 Masterclass Series. And so this is going to be a series of videos 
uh, where I do deep dives into different aspects of the game. So it's not just going to be, oh, they, you, you just got to do this and you get poison gas, you know. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you what to use your poison gas for, like how to use it. Uh, get into the complexities of the game. The first, I'm going to start at the beginning anyway. So I'm going to do one on the prequel, the things that you should be thinking about during the prequel. You know, how the prequel differs from the pre-war period in Global War 1914. You know, things like that, right? Um, so uh, when you go to play the game, you're going to have a better understanding because the game's been out for a while and everybody's had a chance to play it already. Whether they have or not, I don't know. You know, like uh, not everybody bought it on day one for sure, right? But like they, they've, they've had a chance to either watch the game or... Um, or play it themselves, like I said. And um, so they kind of got an idea now of how to play. I, I don't want to keep going on about really simple stuff, right? Like um, you can go back in my videos before, or you can just watch our gameplay videos and, um, you know, you can figure out from there how uh, the rules work and everything. So um, anyway, the Masterclass series is going to show you um, uh, different aspects and how to think about it like it's going to be more of a strategy series not like the strategy videos that I've done in the past for Axis and Allies and, and stuff like I'm not going to pick a nation and say here's the Middle Earth strategy and you do this and this and this I'm going to talk you know about more uh, broad things like I'm going to do uh, probably two videos I think I'm going to break it down into two videos where I'm going to talk about the Western Front and so I'm going to do one from the German perspective you know, like uh, what to do if you're Germany, uh, what are the options for you, and then how to break a trench line. Like I purposely didn't tell you how to do that because I wanted you to figure it out for yourself. Not only that, but you know, I've only played a certain amount of games too, right? So uh, you could fi figure out a better way to do it than I ever did, right? I don't know. Like we'll find out. <laughs> Maybe I did figure it out. I don't know. But there might be a better way than what I did. And so uh, that's why I didn't show people exactly what I'm going to show you now. Um, and then after that, then you can try what I'm showing you or, you know, you can think, well, you know, that's, that's, that's good. I never thought about it that way. But what if you did this, you know, uh, like it might give you an idea on something else that you could do, right? Um, anyway, so I'm going to do one from the this, this perspective of the Germans and then the other video I'm going to do from the perspective of the British and the French because this is a big part of the game, um, in the Western Front, right? So, uh, yeah, like I, I, don't, I'm, I don't need to do a video on trench warfare. Uh, that was something that I was going to dive into as well. But if I do one on the, the Western Front, then it's going to be detailed and you're going to learn how to break trench lines. So I'm not going to need to do a separate video on trench lines. You could just transfer whatever I said about that, you know, to the Eastern Front or wherever you happen to build a trench line, you know, like down in the Middle East or, or whatever, right? Um, anyway, so I'm looking forward to doing the one that one, it, it could take me a while to, to do both those videos, but I'm really looking forward to doing that one because, like I said, that's a really big part of the war, uh, what happens there. Another one, um, like I'm going to do something to do with naval, right? I might even do two of them. Like I might do one, just the naval battle that happens in the, in the North Atlantic because that's a really big deal. And, like, I've seen it go many, many different ways, right? I've seen it where both... Uh, both sides have a big navy at the end, and I've seen it where um, one navy wins, like there's nothing but a German navy left. I've seen it where there's nothing but a British navy left, and I know how it turns out, right? Like it does have a big uh, impact on the game. I'll talk uh, as well about the naval battle in uh, the Mediterranean um, and, and uh, what you can be thinking about in there little bit about convoy rating. Um, I think most people understand convoy rating to a good extent because Global War 1936 has been out for quite a while and the convoy rating basically works the same. The difference with this game and that game is that uh, there's not very many planes in this game, right? So you don't have carriers out there with fighters and tactical bombers and you know, uh, it's, it's really hard to track down the fighters, right? Um, but anyway, everything that I do, I'm, I'm going to try to include everything that, that is relevant, right? Like uh, how do technologies help, you know, for this part of the game that I'm, we're talking about in this video. And, you know, um, 
the timing timing is a really really big deal in this game um, because of the seasons mostly uh, like the seasons you it gives you another thing to think about you know um, you, you don't necessarily want to start a big offensive in the winter time you want to start that big offensive in the springtime even if you start it in the summer like when you calculate things it, it, unless you really dice somebody you know starting a, a a big offensive in the summertime you've only got one turn to do it because the next turn is the winter time <laughs> you know and, you know it's like a built-in trench line doesn't matter how well you do you still only get one round of combat right uh whereas if you start it in the spring then you get you know you're gonna take your first punch and then the summertime you're gonna take your second punch and hopefully you know like you got them down on their knees or or knocked out by then and you know so we'll talk about those sort of things right uh we'll get right into that kind of stuff um might ta do a video on africa like uh if you if you can think of um what you'd like to see in the future what you'd like to know more about then just let me know you know and uh you know i might not get to it the very next day but uh, i'll try to get to it as soon as i can right and uh and and just give you a better picture on how to play the game not just these are the rules of the game but but actually how to play the game and uh that that's going to be cool so anyway um that's one thing that's coming up the other thing and actually so i'm going to be working on it later today is uh, uh the random events 2.0 and the rule book so the rule book i gotta you know i'll be perfectly honest with you i'm not a computer guy right um i'm getting better but uh like i still i don't have um, real technical expertise and so when we did the last rule book uh and i'd been through that uh like probably 10 times i couldn't even look at it anymore but i didn't notice that uh, half the text was missing in one of the text boxes and that was really important and so i've gone and fixed that uh this past week and and uh, put it in the rule book and and then doug he's he's away right now but uh when he comes back like he he wants it done uh he 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 wants to print a rule book like you know the rule book that they had for 36 um he wants to do one of those for this game and so uh he like i what i was just planning on um fixing that and and putting uploading it and then keeping the rest of it in the errata but he said no no we're not gonna we're not going to put a rule book out there when there's uh, corrections to be made uh, so uh, i'm going to have to put all those corrections into the rule book and i got to format it as, as as much as i can anyway plus uh, the random events he uh, we're putting out a, a new random events book and those random events are are much better uh, i took a lot of feedback from the community plus you know uh, uh, when more people started playing the game we were able to see more you know like it wasn't just us with our ideas it was other people throwing in ideas and so we kind of knew much more about um, what we needed or to in the game or what we needed less in the game and so uh, one of the ways that you can get that stuff in the game is through the random events and um, so version 2.0 of the random events like we try to put more stuff about planes in there we tried to uh, well we did we got rid of all the duplicates that were in there because there was you know sometimes there was three different things that were the same one you know but uh, in in the new ones like there's just a, a part of the Spanish flu and then the Spanish flu gets worse and then the Spanish flu gets worse rather than you know it being one thing and then okay here's the same thing and then okay here's the same thing again so it's more of a ramping up and it's not just the spanish flu like there's a lot of different things where um it's war weary one and then war weary two you know what i mean and you might pull them both or you might only pull one of them um we'll see you know like when you play the game um anyway so that is something else that i'm working on is getting those rules so that those two books can go out for printing when when doug gets back into the office and uh so the, the those uh, like i don't have any control over that and uh i can't tell you exactly when those will be available but it should be soon um not tomorrow but you know like uh probably not summertime either you know what i mean it could be as uh, soon as next month who, who knows like it, i think it'll be really soon because everything's pretty much done i just got you know a few days of, of work on the rule book and and that's about it um 
anyway, so that's all the things that I'm going to be doing over the next little while. And I think it's going to keep me pretty busy because um, I, I don't want to just uh, mail it in. You know what I mean? When I make these videos, I want to make good videos. I want to make sure that I get everything that I want in those videos. Like I'm going to watch them back and say, no, no, I want to, you know, I can do that better. <laughs> you know, I can show that better. Or, you know, that was a mistake when I said that or whatever, you know. I, I'm going to try to make these videos as good as I can. And, and so it's going to take me a little bit of time to make them. And again, like I said, if there's something that you want to know more about, uh, learn more about how to do this or how to do that, then by all means, you know, throw a comment in one of my videos and, uh, and uh, I'll see if I... Uh, can get that done as well. Like if I don't have too many other ideas or, you know, I think that there's something that I can add. It could be something that's just a simple matter of just answering your question, you know, like that might be good enough. But, you know, if, if there's something that I think would be, add value to all of the players and, you know, give them a better understanding of, of how to play the game, that certainly I'll I'll, uh, I'll make an effort and, and make a video on that. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. Uh, thanks for joining me and thanks to everybody for joining us uh, all in, in Operation Red Baron. And special thanks to the my fellow competitors in the game, especially my partner, Randall, <laughs> from the land down under. <laughs> I've never talked to anybody in Australia as much as I have over the last couple months, so that was kind of fun. Anyway, uh, uh, getting to know him was really good. He's a great guy. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks to all of those guys for for participating with me in this game and congratulations to the winners. So take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.